Welcome to six sessions of Meant to Live. Today's session is the one that's had the most transformational effect on my life. In fact, I wore combat attire because we're going to go after something that's going to change everything for you. And it's the power of the cross. Now, so far in our time together, we've kept out before us God's great call to life, to himself. Remember, he is life. Now, last session was on realizing excellence, meaning doing the most with what you've been given. Now, I mentioned last week that there are lots of different reasons why we pull back from responding to God's call to life, sometimes even when we know what we're good at, and even when we've been convinced through Scripture that, yes, we are called to this glorious life, and I want this glorious life through Jesus Christ, somehow we still can't get there. Something is in the way, and we want to go after that today. Remember, in session one, Adam and Eve went into hiding. Well, in a sense, we've been hiding ever since. And for many reasons, our glory is veiled, hidden, covered up. Why? Well, because our life has been doused with very concrete experiences of the fall, or what's often called the curse. In other words, we've got junk to overcome. <laughs> so around year seven in my marriage to Cam, we were struggling. And I had put my career as a singer on Simber to stay at home with our two boys who were about three and five at the time and Cam traveled all the time. But Saturdays were really exciting for me because he'd typically be home and I would have all these ideas of what we would be doing together, kind of itching to get out as a family and have some fun. And Cam sometimes would have other ideas. Now I want to be clear, of course in our marriages you've got to kind of work out his needs, her needs, I get that, but I'm just telling my part of the story here. I would find myself on these Saturdays getting really angry at him because it was sort of rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, and this was kind of going on not every Saturday but often. And I'd get angry at him and he'd say, you're so angry, and I'd be like, oh, full of shame. And in fact, at one time, he would sort of continue to say this because it kind of continued to go on again, not every Saturday, but and he would just say, you're so angry. One time I was so angry, in fact, <laughs> it was an evening and I was cooking spaghetti and I took the whole pot of red sauce, the marinara sauce, and I whipped it at him across the room and it splatted all over the walls, all over him. And he was like, oh, great. And he was like, you're so angry. Well, no surprise, we ended up in counseling. And at one point, uh, the counselor said to me, Nancy, tell me about your background. Tell me about your parents. And I was like, well, um, my dad was abusive and left when I was a little girl, but I had an amazing mom, sort of like you have a red car, you have a blue car, you have a dog, you have a cat, vive la différence. And I was like, but you know, I had this amazing mother, but that really has nothing to do with Cam and me. So let's get to the point. And he said to me at the end of the session, Nancy, I have something I want you to do. I want you to go home and I want you to write on a piece of paper everything you want Cam to be to those two little boys of yours. And I was like, no problem. <laughs> so I go home and I'm like, I want him to provide for them, to protect, to go to their sports games. I want them, I want him to love them. And I just went through, I had this little, like litany of things I wanted Cam to be to David and Aaron. And I went back the next week with Cam and uh, there we were sitting in the counselor's office again. And he said to me, Nancy, so read me your list. And I was so happy and I'm reading the list and going through the whole list and I'm like, okay, so make Cam be that to these boys. And he said, I have another uh, assignment for you, Nancy. And this was at the end of the session. He said, now this week what I want you to do is I want you to go home and I want you to get alone with God. He knew I was a Christian. Get alone with God and I want you to take that list and I want you to pray. God, I never had a father who provided for me. I never had a father who protected me. I never had a father who came to my sports, my games. I never had a father who told me he loved me. And honestly, it was a watershed moment for me. He totally turned the tables on me and I went home and I did what he told me to do and I just wept over that list. I was like, oh my gosh. And you know, for you, 
it's going to be different things. For you, it could be sexual abuse, sins and curses against you that's maybe even led you to withholding yourself from your spouse and from entering into intimacy and actually maybe even is despising him for trying. Or it could be verbal destruction, language that was used toward you to hold you down and hold you back that you now find flying out of your mouth at times. Labels, little phrases you've said over and over and even adopted as part of your identity. Loser, idiot, even seemingly innocuous things like my ADD, my chronic back pain, my migraine headaches, and we just kind of kind of own them and fold them into our identities. Now, the question is, what do we do with this? Well, I want to show you something. Yes, I'm pulling out my book, Meant to Live. Remember, this whole six series is based on this book. Um, but I want to show you something that's in my book, and it's called The Cross Chart. And this has been a huge, huge deal to me in my life. Now, you've probably seen this cross chart before, but um, I want you to see how practically you can actually overcome these curses by looking at this cross chart. Now, in the last few sessions, I've really focused on this, this upward line. I have focused on glory and life and excellence and really this is, these are blessings, right? These are, this is this upward line and everything, all of it, is found in God. It is all from God. It is all God, right? So we want this line. We've been focusing on this upward line right here. But right now, for the rest of our session, I want us to look at the bad news. I want us to go back to that place, remember, with Adam and Eve, where they were hidden and covered and veiled. That's what we're looking at right now. We're going to spend the time on this lower line, this line that deals with the dark things that, that we have done or left undone or things that have been done to us or withheld from us. So I want us to kind of focus on this. But I also want you to notice that these two lines continue to move away from each other because the more that you grow in God, the more aware you become of this ever-increasing gap between God's glory, excellence, life, all these blessings, and our sin sickness. You become more aware to this ever-increasing gap. And so we have to pay attention. How do we get there? Because we have a predicament, right? How do we get to this place, because that's what we're looking for. Well, enter the cross. Listen to Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessings given to Abraham might come to us through Christ Jesus. Now these two verses describe this cross chart. Christ redeemed us. What does redeemed mean? Saved, rescued us from the curse of the law. And the curse of the law was this perfect standard, the law, which revealed anything imperfect. Kind of like if you're with your perfect sister, you always feel like, uh, never mind, right? How did he do this? He became a curse for us in his sinless, perfect life, fulfilling the law's perfect standards, Christ became the once and for all perfect sacrifice on the cross. Now, why did he do this? Well, he did this in order that the blessings that go all the way back to Abraham, the covenant that God made with Abraham, might now come to us through Christ. Now, how does this work practically? Well, number one, Join yourself to Christ, regardless of how you identify yourself, non-Christian, Christian, un-Christian, Christian, de-church, whatever. I implore you, join yourself to Christ. Just say, Jesus, I join myself to you now. Number two, joined with Christ, we now go to that place, that dark place, right? That hidden place, that covered up place, that veiled place, and we acknowledge our sin sickness. Now, let me say this. 
We're acknowledging the things done to us, the things withheld from us, that can be hard, like the fatherlessness in my life. Um, then we acknowledge also the things that we have done, I have done, and left undone. The attitudes I've had, the waywardness, or, you know, I'm going my own way. We acknowledge those things. I have to say this, as we do that, God's going to reveal some things in your group today. Maybe even right now, he's showing you things. You might want to jot them down, frankly. But that is going to continue. God will continue to show you these things, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, as the days and weeks unfold. Sometimes I've prayed like this, and God has shown me things in his kindness and mercy, things that I haven't thought of for a long time or had buried way down deep, and all of a sudden it comes to mind. That is how God does this. So you acknowledge, again, joined with Christ, you acknowledge this sin sickness. And sometimes, my dear friends, sometimes you're going to mourn and feel sadness about this. Sometimes it feels like death. And in a sense, it really is. It's really what's meant by the verse, I have been crucified with Christ. Number four, you look at the cross. Get your eyes on the cross because by his death, Christ overcame all sin, sickness, and curses. And in his resurrection, he overcame death. So joined with Christ today, you relive what actually happened 2,000 years ago and realize that same power. And in that place of dying and rising with Christ through the cross, he overcame the curse and exchanged it for blessings. So you can see that the more you grow in this, you can see the size of the cross, the cross just increases its power and effectiveness in your life. So join yourself to Jesus Christ. Ask him to remove any and every barrier, every curse that still plagues you today. And in exchange, Ask him to give you the blessings of eternal, increasing, and unending life.